Sutra. The magistrate asked further, "Your disciple has often seen the Sangha and laity reciting Amitabha Buddha, vowing to be reborn in the West. Will the High Master please tell me if they will obtain rebirth there, and so dispel my doubts?" Commentary: The magistrate said, "The clergy and laymen." Recite the name of Amitabha Buddha, the Buddha of limitless light. They all vow to be reborn in the land of ultimate bliss. High Master, will they actually be born there? The magistrate himself understood the principle, but he knew that others present in the assembly did not understand, and so he asked the sixth patriarch for an explanation. At that time, the reciters of the Buddha's name standard. The transcom, transcom people eat their fill, sit down, shut their eyes, and go to sleep. What kind of work is that? Lazy work. They don't compare with those who recite the Buddha's name. Recitation is the best drama doll. The transcom fired back. You recite the name of Amitabha Buddha to gain rebirth in the West. In the past, before Amitabha Buddha, what Buddha's name did you recite? And so they fought, saying, "You're wrong, you're wrong." Until finally, nobody knew who was right. Sutra, the master said, "Magistrate, listen well. Hui Neng will explain it for you. When the world honored one was in Shravasti city, he spoke of being led to rebirth in the West. The sutra text clearly states it is not far from here." If we discuss its appearance, it is one hundred eight thousand miles away, but in immediate terms, it is just beyond the ten evils and the eight deviations within us. It is explained as far distant for those of inferior rules and as nearby for those of superior wisdom. Commentary: Shravasti is a city in India. Translated, it means abundance and virtue. In Shravasti, the five desires were abundant for fame, wealth, sex, food, and sleep. The people of Shravasti had the virtue of much learning and liberation. They had studied a great deal and were not a tax in this city of abundance and virtue. The Buddha spoke of being led to rebirth. In the land of ultimate bliss, the land of ultimate bliss appears to be one hundred eight thousand miles away. But if you discuss it in immediate terms, it is just beyond the ten evils and the eight deviations within us. Actually, the Amitabha Sutra says that the Western Paradise is ten billion lands away. But the great master said, "One hundred eight thousand miles," because he wanted to count the prejudices of those in the assembly. He wanted to counter the prejudices of those in the assembly in terms of its appearance. The western land is far away, but in terms of our own nature, it is just beyond the ten evils and the eight deviations. Of the ten evils. Three are committed with the body: killing, stealing, sexual misconduct. Three are committed with the mind: greed, hatred, delusion, or wrong views. Four are committed with the mouth, a most dirty thing. Four language, talking about the affairs of men and women, lying, harsh speech, and slander. The eight deviations. Are the opposite of the eightfold path. Shakyamuni Buddha taught the eightfold path of right views, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right vigor, right recollection, right concentration. The eight deviations then would consist of seven views: seven thought, seven speech, seven action, seven livelihood, seven vigor. Devon recollection and Devon concentration.